Hello everyone. Yesterday I watched the movie Gosnell, The Trial of America's Biggest Serial Killer. This movie is so impactful, I really needed a day to digest what I had seen. Just being able to deal with the grim subject matter of Dr. Kermit Gosnell would have been enough to make this film an incredibly important movie. But I also believe, by refusing to make a cheap or poorly produced flick about a serial killer, the Gosnell film is also an excellent example of the art of good filmmaking serving an important story. This is a film I look at as high art, one which creates an emotional impact through the presentation of the details of the trial, rather than just using emotion to punish the viewer. I cried twice, once during the scene depicting the grand jury investigation, and once during the trial itself. First, my thoughts on Andrew Clavin's screenplay. If you follow The Andrew Clavin Show, which is the only political podcast I would ever recommend to serious artists and writers, you know that Clavin takes very seriously the importance of storytelling in shaping a culture. Even when he discusses political topics, this emphasis on narrative guides Andrew Clavin's thinking. Because of that, it's very fitting that he would write a screenplay which fundamentally tells a story which any audience can relate to. The opening scenes introduce us to the major characters who investigated and prosecuted Dr. Kermit Gosnell. The opening is humorous, well-acted, and tightly paced. Once a drug investigation leads to Dr. Kermit Gosnell, the tone of the movie shifts radically. The filthy, cat-infested state of Gosnell's clinic is like a gut punch, and everything from the cinematography to the soundtrack reinforces the feeling this movie needs to evoke. Unease. That feeling never goes away while you're watching this movie, and it builds as the investigation discovers more of the gruesome details of Gosnell's practice. When portraying Dr. Kermit Gosnell, actor Earl Billings reminds me of the impact when I first watched Anthony Hopkins portray Dr. Hannibal Lecter. But Billings plays Gosnell with much more subtlety. One memorable aspect of the original Gosnell trial was Dr. Gosnell's public statements, which suggested that, in his own mind, Dr. Gosnell had convinced himself that he wasn't doing anything wrong. Billings captures this strikingly. Because this movie is largely being promoted by the pro-life community, critics and opponents of the pro-life movement might be tempted to see the Gosnell film as a political propaganda piece that they can safely ignore. If that describes you, I would strongly urge you to reconsider. The fact that Dr. Kermit Gosnell was an abortionist is a detail that no movie about his murders could possibly ignore. Yet the way these details are discussed in the story are actually the perfect illustration of why this is a critically important movie and important trial for every American, every person, to see and to give serious thought to. When the pro-choice assistant district attorney, Lexi McGuire, played with calm, emotional sophistication by actress Sarah Jane Morris, decides to prosecute Dr. Kermit Gosnell, she is convinced that the best strategy is to argue that Dr. Gosnell's murders were not legal abortions. This even includes calling a professional female abortionist as a witness for the prosecution. In contrast, the lawyer defending Gosnell wants the jury to see the matter as a matter of an abortion doctor being unfairly prosecuted because of his race. What's significant is this is a story which might upset your expectations. If you go into it expecting the prosecutors to be heroic pro-life Christians, epically owning pro-abortion straw man arguments from the defense with a lot of mic drop moments, you have the wrong impression of what this movie actually is. By using public records and eyewitness accounts as the basis for the police investigation and trial scenes, this movie presents the facts of the case to you in such a way that the details of the case give the film its emotional power, not cheesy over-the-top lecturing from actors. If the reason you have not gone to see this movie is, in your mind, you think, this is just an abortion movie, I would say that this is a movie which discusses Dr. Gosnell's practice as an abortionist because of its relevance to his murders, but it is far more than a cheap political point or a cheesy Christian flick. 
This is a movie about how people could possibly ignore the warning signs for a person like Dr. Kermit Gosnell, which likely would have prevented the death of a middle-aged immigrant woman from his malpractice and the children he killed after delivering them outside the womb while breathing. It's a movie which asks us to think about what causes us to turn a blind eye or fail to take seriously parts of life that make us uncomfortable and the tragic deaths that can result from our unwillingness to expose ourselves to awful truths. This is a human film with a message that should speak to all humanity. The very nature of its subject matter ensured that this would always be an important movie, but the excellent focus and production of this film ensure that this will be one of the most powerful and profound works to ever be put to film. I have no doubt that the power of this story will resonate and challenge audiences for decades and centuries to come. Do not miss Gosnell, The Trial of America's Biggest Serial Killer in theaters. For families with children, the PG-13 rating accurately reflects that this movie was concerned not to shove a bunch of gruesome blood and guts and gore into the audience's face for shock effect. But there was no way to make an effective film about this subject matter without discussing genuinely disturbing details of Gosnell's murders. I would recommend this film to anyone, including a young adult, who is mature enough to think about the nature of murder and evil in our world. Thank you for listening.